Uh, so we're Kazooby Kazoos. We are a place that spreads joy around the world. A kazoo is a Merlotone instrument, so it works off of vibration. It needs a little resonator in there, so you've got to make a lot of noise. You can sing, talk, or laugh because you want that little resonator to shake around and give you that vibration. So if you go, Ooh. that is how you get your sound. We make about a million kazoos a year, um, and then we ship them all over the world. I got in the kazoo business, I just, I just lucked out. Uh, my background was in theater. I grew up in Beaufort, South Carolina. Got connected with a guy who was the king of kazoo, Rick Hubbard. I was Rick's production manager, and uh, Rick had this custom motor coach that we traveled around the country in. Um, he had everything from uh, a whole stage full of bubble machines to confetti cannons to lights and lasers. It was really a rock show for kids and for adults, but all through music and all through uh, using the kazoo to, to really bring people in, have a good time, and, and celebrate together. Uh, I got tired of living out of a suitcase and uh, living on the road wasn't as glamorous as I thought it was gonna be. So I made an offer to take over the e-commerce business. I was 19 years old at the time. Uh, so the partners that I worked for, they flew me to Detroit. So we bought all the assets, moved it to Hilton Head Island, uh, and we just celebrated 20 years in the kazoo business. So the history of the kazoo is a, a bit unsure. Since we don't know how the kazoo was invented, we've had people come up with their own ideas. We truly think that it's probably been around for a really long time. In 1850, ancient aliens introduced them to speak to humans through music. Most likely, it's kind of originated from ancient times where tribes and things like that would take things like gourds and bone, hollow them out. The kazoo was developed as a homing call for errant donkeys. They use things like leather or even the egg sack of a spider as a medieval torture device uh, for that merlotone, uh, that resonator, that vibration part. To seduce women and men, so seductive, almost like Kenny G on the sax. One theory about how the kazoo got its name was that George Smith had bought the rights to the kazoo, uh, taken it to his factory in New York. It was called the Down South Submarine at that point and they had filed a patent for the Down South Submarine. And the patent office came back and said, ah, eh, submarine's already taken, you gotta come up with some other name. And so sitting around the factory, uh, someone said, ah, how about kazoo? That's what it sounds like, let's call it a, let's call it a kazoo. They've always kind of been used for both music, mainstream music, um, professional music, and they've also been kind of a novelty toy at the same time. So if, even from the turn of the century, uh, we would get little kazoos looking like little fish for kids, uh, all the way up to kind of more modern day where they were adapting them into um, fast food, uh, Happy Meal toys, things like that. It is a fun business and most of the people who come and want to give us their money to buy kazoos are really fun, cool people. What would not make me come to Kazooby Kazoos? Oh, I'm going to get the very loud horn. I'm going to toot it the whole way back to Maryland. He's going to be walking back to Maryland if he blows that loudest kazoo. <laughs> the kazoo love is out there. <laughs> There's lots of it. Uh, the demand is good. Uh, we do a little over a million of our basic plastic kazoo, and then several hundred thousand of other noise makers, uh, accessories, uh, and adaptations that we've manufactured over the, over the years. Uh, and we are a global company. We have customers in 30 countries now. Uh, so our kazoos are made of polypropylene, polyethylene, uh, which is heavy duty, durable medical grade plastic. Uh, the melting of the plastic happens down in Tampa, Florida. It's in St. Pete. That's um, where they have our mold. It is our patent, but they're melting it there. So still made in the United States. Uh, they send all the parts and pieces to us here and we hand assemble every kazoo here in Beaufort. The museum really starts from what we could find on the beginning of the kazoo history, which starts in the late 1800s. So we've kind of collected kazoos that have spanned over the last uh, probably 140 years. We just completed a major renovation of the museum. So it's been here a little over a decade. Um, we're really proud of the museum because the kazoo is a part of American heritage, American legacy, and we think it's our responsibility to help promote that. So we've got you know kazoos from the first patent, 
to kind of handmade kazoos and just showing you different styles and how they've evolved over the decades. I think I'm good at it, but I, I think a lot of us are good at the kazoo. It's an instrument you can pick up quickly and um, you know, it's you making the noise. So the more uh, passion you have behind that instrument, the more passionate your kazoo sounds. For me, it's about being able to make something, uh, creating some joy in the world, and then I've got this really great team of people that come in every day, work really hard, really proud of the product that we, that we produce. Um, so I don't intend on getting out of the kazoo business anytime soon, as long as people are still willing to buy our products.